I thought there was an actual song called Spirit of the 80s. I was like, I, I was going to say, yeah. One. Let's write the song of three of us together. Spirit of the 80s. Spirit of the 80s! <laughs> Cobra Kai is nostalgic fun with some punch. Cobra Kai was some old school karate. Cobra Kai was an 80s punch to the face. Nice. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode so that you don't have to. And then we talk about it. With us, as always, superhero, comedian, and rock star, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. Superhero? What are my superpowers? Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, and with us today is Vera Vanguard, actress, hand model, bodybuilder, and so much more. How are you? Awesome. My name is Ryan T. Husk. Oh, so sorry. There was more to this story. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm here amongst my instrument. Oh. <laughs> nice. Uh, and I'm wearing my Megadeth shirt so that I can fit in with this 80s rock style kind of, I think this... This was a uh, piece sells, but who's buying was that like 1986? So we're close. It's it's close to the year. What year was close this? Close enough. Uh, the original, I think yeah, it was. I think we asked Alexa, and it was 36 years ago. So you do the math, math Ooh, guy. 84, 84. Okay, so very close. This is as close as I could get with the Mega shirt. Um, yeah. Do you want to tell us what this? Uh, oh, by the way, we are reviewing Cobra Kai, episode one, called Ace Degenerate. And uh, what was it about, Michael? 30 years after their final confrontation in the 1984, I guess that says right here, 1984 <laughs> we known. All Valley Karate Tournament, Johnny Lawrence is at rock bottom as an unemployed handyman. Well, he becomes unemployed in this episode. We'll talk about that. Haunted <laughs> by his wasted life. However, when Johnny rescues a bullied kid, Miguel... From, from bullies, he is inspired to restart the notorious Cobra Kai Dojo. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. No mercy. None. An enemy deserves no mercy. None. So before we get too far into it, everybody, uh, if you'd like for us to review uh, a series or the first episode of a series, just say WTF Simpsons or WTF Frasier, or WTF All in the Family. And uh, WTF obviously stands <laughs> for Watch the First. Watch the First is what we do. So let's Ryan talk likes about old it. shows like that. It's just my panic. I start to say WTF, <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I don't have something in my head. And I keep saying the same ones over and over again. So I try to, th and that was like All in the Family. I've never even watched that, nor do I care to. So don't say WTF All in the Family. Yeah, me head. Meathead. Yeah, I guess he said that. Yeah, Rob Reiner played a character called called Meathead. Okay, perfect. Just a moment. So anyway, um, Siri thought I was talking to him. I've got a, uh, I've got a, a South African accent on my. Ah, I've got a fe female Brit. Okay, she calls me Master. Ooh. Mine calls me Sheila. Ah. Hi, Sheila. Oh, wait, that's Australian. Yeah. Anyway, so let's talk about this thing. Uh, Vera, the way we start every show is we talk about what we expected versus what we got. You know, so before you watch the episode, you expected something or nothing. And uh, we contrast that with what we got. So, Michael, what did you expect, first of all? So when I had first heard that they were doing a show called Cobra Kai that was a spinoff of the 80s movie Karate Kid featuring the same actors that acted in the movie, the Karate Kid, except for Pat Marina, of course, uh, rest in peace. Um, I, I was a, a little bit skeptical at first. I was like, it, this cannot be any good. There's no way <laughs> that this show can be any good. That's what I expected. You expected something that was not any good. Well, I was like, how can they make a show that's good with about the Karate Kid 
36 years in the future featuring the same actors that worked in the Karate Kid who are all old now. So, mm. Well, Vera, without getting into details as to what we got, what did you expect before you watched it? I, I actually heard amazing things about this show and the fact that like no one really worked after these movies and they brought back the original actors. I'm like, well, what are they, they're, what are, what are they doing right now? Nothing? Who's not going to take that paycheck? Hell yeah, right. they're going to put their freaking heart and soul into this thing. So uh, I was expecting, I, I was hoping, not the expecting, I was hoping that they would stay with the spirit of the original movies. That's, that's what I was hoping for. Okay. Ryan, now you get a turn. What a relief. Get a turn. So get. I'll tell you what I expected. Um, I watched it originally uh, when it first came out on YouTube, Red. So I knew even less about it. It was before there was all the rage about it. Um, and that was a couple of years ago. So what I expected, I, I really didn't expect much. I think it just popped up, you know, in a, in a suggested thing. They were really, really, really suggesting it hard on YouTube when it first came out, like really pushing it. And they're like, you can watch the first episode for free and then you have to watch the rest on YouTube Red or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, I'll watch the first minute out of curiosity because that's really how they get you. Yeah. Curiosity. So I don't think I expected much. I was just curious as to how it played out. And it was kind of, it's basically a sequel more than even a spinoff, really, right? right? Yeah. And so I think it's kind of like one of those things, like a kind of a car wreck where you're just like, <laughs> well, I kind of got. I kind of got to see what's going on with these guys. Almost forty years later, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, YouTube's, I was. YouTube's, YouTube's like, hey, check out this thing we spent a bunch of money on. Please like it. Over and over and over again until you're like, all right, I'll watch the first minute. I mean, if you they do that where you just push a button. Sometimes you don't even have to push a button. Sometimes it just starts playing. Yeah. <laughs> and you just have to be breathing, and it just goes. So they they. You know, it worked, yeah. but I watched it again for the purposes of this podcast too. So uh, that was what we expected. What do we didn't get, Mike? Go on and watch the whole thing. Well, we'll have to stay tuned for that. <laughs> we'll stay tuned for that. We'll definitely cover that. Yeah. Uh, what did you get, Michael? Um, well, I got something that was unexpectedly good. I thought that they. Number one, I thought it was smart that they uh, re remained in the spirit of the original uh, Karate mm -hmm. Kid uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of 80s music. Um, obviously, this guy is like, has done nothing since his glory days of, of high school when he was a young little punk and a bully and, <laughs> and a hot shot at, at the Cobra Kai Dojo. Uh, and they kind of kept all that, uh, the, the spirit of all that. Uh, but then also... I thought I thought uh, there was some really good subtle humor too, which was unexpected and quite delightful. Yeah, uh, Vera, what did you get? I I was very very pleasantly surprised that they stayed as a sequel, like Mike said, and they're continuing that story. And you know, you always think about like why do we all love eighties music and eighties movies? It's because the underlying theme to all of that is like, follow your dreams. Okay. <laughs> so these guys follow their dreams. And at the end of every 80s movie, it's like, yeah, they got the girl. They, they saved their community, whatever the fuck. And then, like, what happens after? And this is the answer. Yeah. They all become like goddamn losers anyway. Somebody becomes a car salesman. Somebody becomes a handyman. You know, life goes on. It's like they go on to become millionaire rock stars. But... Like, so like, oh my God, it's like grounded in reality. Like, yeah, yeah. Daniel I don't know, Daniel, Daniel LaRusso might be a millionaire. He's got, he's, he's, he's got uh, auto dealerships in, in what, Tarzana, be, yeah, uh, like, North yeah. Hollywood, Woodland yeah, Hills, Sherman Oaks. Like, but he goes on to have a career in something other than karate. Like, right. it's just like, you know, it was a phase in his life. And he's like, yeah, that was, that was fun. Let me become like a real person and an entrepreneur. And the other guy's like, becomes a goddamn loser. 
which you would think the bully would be. And, and like, you right, know, right. like, oh, this, this loser bully, nothing will happen with his life. And they actually, like, that's what he actually becomes. But Daniel's also kind of living in the past of his glory days when he w- he won the All Valley oh, Tournament in 1984, and that's that like his whole stuff. shtick for his whole his whole dealership. That was good he, stuff. Let well, let, hang on. Let's let's talk about that a little bit more when we right, get we to it. We want to hear what Ryan got because that's that he deserves did. its own chunk of discussion. I think. Right. That was oh, good yeah. stuff. I was going to add that with that to add on top of that, he is now Al Bundy. He's got that four touchdowns in a single game. That's his. That's his right. moment. That's yeah. it. Ryan, what did poke, you get for poke high? Well, um, you know, I got a, I got a good good first episode. It was good. It was funny. It was. It gave you that '80s feel, not just out of like nostalgia it wasn't just just good because of the 80s nostalgia Mm -hmm. it also captured what the 80s did so well which was pump you up like it's just like it's like mindless brainless silly fun where you're just like yay and if somebody said (laughs) why are you so excited you're like i don't know just because he's gonna you know he's gonna go get him and then we're playing some playing some poison don't need nothing but a good time you know and like it, it just you just it's just simple easy fun you know and nowadays movies don't usually do that tv shows don't everything's heavy everything has a message everything's trying to teach you something but back Ew. in the 80s but back in the 80s the, the the message was just like yeah yay yeah, that's how, your dream. yeah so that's what i Kick got the bully's ass you can yeah. do it very predictable, very easy, fun, very silly, but you find yourself smiling. You find yourself being happy. You find yourself jumping up and cheering mentally. So that's what I got, mental so I've, cheering. I've got a conundrum to pose to you all. Oh dear. Back in the 1984 movie called The Karate Kid, of which the show is a sequel, uh, Daniel LaRusso wins the fight with an illegal kick to the face right discuss correct oh oh. did you guys see that youtube video where (laughs) they do the whole thing from johnny's point of view yes and daniel is his bully yes (laughs) and i wonder if maybe that was the i think that's the correct or or maybe that was the inspiration behind this and to answer your yeah. question michael i don't know if we knew back when we first watched the karate kid as children i don't know if it was i don't remember if it was said that that was an illegal kick did they say that was an illegal kick so i mean i was when i was, well first of all we should probably ask our resident uh, uh martial arts expert here who we've who've got on as a guest on the show to to maybe talk to us about what what the the legal legalities are about a kick to the face in an under eighteen tournament. Right. Uh, oh, is that is that me? That's you. Uh, I actually got roped in once at the Battle of Detroit to to uh, judge one of these things because they're like, "Hey, Mary, you're a kung fu black belt." I'm like, maybe I don't know, but. <laughs> Well, hang on. Yeah, are you or aren't you? Are <laughs> you don't. Nobody passes the black belt kung fu tests without knowing it. <laughs> so, so I've heard and experienced. But like, yeah, I got roped into this, and the rules are the rules. And like, you know, if you do an illegal thing, you're not supposed to win. But you know, it's the '80s, so you know, you blow up everything, and it's like, yeah. So what you're saying is billions you're, of dollars in damage. So you're saying that the kick to the face was illegal. It's illegal to it kick was. someone in the face. Yes, by the rules of the, if if I mean if it was MMA full out where you could you know hot glue you know glass to your knuckles, that's a whole nother game. But this was a this was a, a hoity toity challenge where you're not supposed to go for knees, you're not supposed to go for the face. I mean, they actually say these rules during the tournament in the movie. So really. I don't remember. Yeah. See, I haven't seen it since I, I was didn't a watch kid. the movie before I watched the show, so maybe I should that's have. Why, that's you, why he wasn't oh. supposed to sweep the knee, sweep the leg. Because remember, Cobra Kai guy goes, go for the knee? 
And he's mm-hmm. like, oh, no, Sensei, no. Sweep the leg. You have a problem, you got a problem with that? With that? Yeah. Put him and in a was- body bag. <laughs> 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 all, body bag, Johnny. all these classic lines yeah, yeah. so it's funny because i i didn't know that as a kid and i don't think anybody did that that was an illegal move and the judge or referee is just like cool with whatever yep. hey all right he's like okay whatever championship i thought this match wasn't even gonna happen so let's just knock it right out real quick fine kick in the right. face moving on now you're the winner face kicker yeah <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, I just thought it was a cool move. The crane, you know, you're like, yeah. and like we, my, my brother and I would always like try to practice doing that and kick each other in the face. <laughs> um, I actually make fun of that in my movie with the Barbie. I have my guy do a crane. Oh, up. funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do remember watching that when I was a kid and rewinding it and playing it in slow motion because I'm a very nitpicky kind of guy. And I was like, let's see. If his left leg was the injured one, and so he jumps off of his right <laughs> leg and kicks with his right leg, right? Then I was thinking like, he's probably gonna land back on his left injured foot, right? Because he can only jump off on his right leg and kick with his right leg there's nobody going to be able to come back down on your right leg with the left leg staying there. So I remember like playing that in slow motion and seeing that he does in fact land on his injured left leg and then his right leg follows after. And we're just supposed to pretend like, okay, he can't stand on his left leg. He can't jump from it. He can't kick from it, but he can land on it. No problem. Slip the other way. Ryan hates logical fallacies in TV and movies. Well, because, movies, well, because yeah. I tried to do it first. And I was like, there's no way you can do it without landing on your left leg. And then I played it in slow motion. I was like, I got you, Danielson. I got you. See, I, I thought, I guess for, for me, I was always under the impression that he was kicking with his other leg. Um, the one that was in the air, that was, that was in, in the air when he was like... <laughs> you look uh, like a marionette. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he like jumped and kicked with the leg that was already in the air but maybe i'm wrong i could be right i've been wrong in the past <laughs> Me you thought you were wrong but you were wrong about that <laughs> so actually yeah so actually this guy johnny he's got actually a legitimate gripe with this this guy daniel after yeah. all these years where he's like you won but it was it was an illegal move and yet somehow the dumb referee called it in your favor he was a bad. Right. And as Vera was saying, uh, basically, you know, he said, well, the, the kick to the knee was, was uh, illegal too. And so the judge allowed a kick to the knee or to the leg, which was illegal. Then he allowed a kick to the face, which was illegal. This dude just needs to be fired. He's getting everything wrong. But the point that he made was like, yeah, well, you got the point. Or I, I just got a point for it. You got a championship for it. So that's not fair. It's right. not equal. Right. I'm wondering, I'm really wondering if we watch the rest of the series, do they bring back that judge and like go, hey man, <laughs> you F the F up out of my life, man. They should. They should. Yeah, I, Daniel I, I, should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, Johnny should. Johnny should say, hey man, you I me? should have been the one that won. I should be the one that owns all the car dealerships and is karate yeah. shopping the prices. Oh. And are car dealerships also auto body shops? I didn't know that. They well, they, are. They usually have like a, a shop. Yeah. Like a um, service center. Actually, the auto, like uh, dealerships usually have the, the best mechanics too because they're, but they're also usually trained in how to, to, to service those newer vehicles that they're selling as well. Yeah, to flip um, them. Exactly. Hmm. So hmm. that's my... Actually, I just I just really recently heard about this this whole thing about how, yeah, like how yeah Daniel won with an illegal kick to the face, and I never, same as you guys, I never like when I was a kid in the '80s, yeah. I just thought the crane move was cool, and that's why I joined. That's, that's why I started taking Taekwondo, like like a million other white kids my age, and yeah. So there's another thing I kind of wanted to talk about that we we started to touch upon. Um, the fact that there's this kind of the switch where the dude was the bad guy. What's his name? Johnny. Johnny was the bad guy at first. He was the villain. And now he's the hero, which is something that's very interesting that we all do. 
uh, nowadays. It's kind of a fun thing to do to switch perspectives. But yeah, as Vera, you mentioned that there is a YouTube video which shows that the truth is Daniel was really the villain. He comes, yeah. he shows up, he steals some dude's girl, he yeah. talks shit to him, then he cheats to win at the end. Like all these things where you're like, wait a minute, Daniel's really the jerk in this. So I wonder, I wonder if that was the inspiration for whomever wrote it. And I did see my, that. My favorite line from that is like, he, with the help of local busybody <laughs> and child beer, Pat Maria. Child beer. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. Right, 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 right. <laughs> local Local busybody and child beater. Oh my god. Because he did, yeah, he beat up children beat up in one scene. Well, so did, yeah, so did Johnny in this one too. He, right. He like, these, these punks start messing with, well, I mean, they started it, but then he's like kicking, their, literally kicking their asses, like wiping the floor with them and like, but then the cop shows up and then of course, like he's the one that's going to get pepper sprayed and arrested because he's beating up a bunch of kids. Right. The funny thing is, the funny part for me was that he beat them up for three rounds. Right. Like they attacked him. He beat him up. Then they get up again and attack him again. They get beat up and they get up a third time. And like at what point, even one, at one point, one of the guys was like, come on, let's get out of here. He's like, no, I want to keep getting beat up. <laughs> he, just came, he just came right back. So well, it's because he wasn't hitting them hard, right? He was just, I don't know. He was just slapping them around with his foot. So, so what I was thinking when, I saw that uh, Ralph Macchio was an executive producer on this. I don't know who else was. I just kind of flashed and it caught my attention. My thought was, what was the pitch like? How do you think? Because it was probably one of those ideas that was a very easy pitch. Kind of like the way I look at, uh, there was a movie that came out a long time ago called Cowboys versus Aliens. Mm -hmm. I never watched it, but I imagine the pitch meeting was like, Okay, I got an idea. Hear me out. It's called Cowboys versus Aliens. And they go, sold. And he's like, well, no. They go, sold. What's it about? And they go, uh, well, it's about Cowboys versus Aliens. Okay, sold. Green light. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, and so I'm thinking that they came in. He's like, okay, imagine the Karate Kid 35 years later. Sold. Or, yeah. Johnny's, Johnny's a loser. Daniel is a car salesman. And wait, 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 are you going to be in it? <laughs> wait, hold on. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, like you would think, and so I think that like whoever pitched it to Ralph Macho probably first, I would think. And I can imagine Ralph saying, I love it. That's a hilarious idea. That's great. And not just because I haven't worked in 30 years. And then, <laughs> and then he pitched it to his old buddy, Johnny, uh, played by whatever, Zabka Will, something. William, Zabka. William Zabka. Mm hmm I, I just feel like that was the easiest pitch. I feel like anybody would say, oh my God, I love okay. it. What do the you guys three think? Of us are, the three of us being actors and stuff, can you imagine hey, hey, that hey, phone hey, call? Hey, hey, hey. I don't identify as an actor, okay? Pardon me. <laughs> uh, as, uh, in the industry, yeah. uh, can you imagine that phone call? You've been like on your couch drinking for 30 years and like, hey man, you want to star in your own show? <laughs> Well, I don't know, but then also. Hey, 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 William. Hey, hey, this is Ralphie. Hey, hey, buddy. Uh, you remember that hey. uh, that that the little movie we did a little bit? Like, yeah, you know, the Karate Kid. Yeah. Uh, no, we're gonna make a show, man, and uh, it's gonna be you and me, and we're gonna be and like you you're star. gonna be the good guy, and I'm gonna be the bad guy. But even better is, then there's the other thing about it where he says, "Well, what do you, you, you haven't? I thought you haven't been working. I know I haven't in like thirty years, but my friend had this great idea. What? Well, is it?" Is it picked up? Oh yeah, we're gonna put it up on YouTube. I see. Okay, uh, 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 I I see where this is going. Okay, that's that's cute. So you're 60 years old. You want to revive your career? You're gonna do some YouTube videos? No, no. But it's really like funded, like for real. Let me guess. You're gonna just shoot it in the same town of like Reseda? Well, yeah, but we'll also go to like Encino. Oh, okay. Kind of guerrilla style, just kind of running in someone's park and like. <laughs> shooting uh i did love by the way that you know i live in the valley and right. i love that karate kid was shot in Reseda, just a few miles west of me and i love that they're mentioning sherman oaks and they're mentioning encino and tarzan and all this stuff which is and all nice. right around the corner yeah and i love that you can recognize some of the places where they're shooting you know they go by encino commons and all this stuff 
it's really cool to see, you know, Van Van Nuys in the Valley getting a little love, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I used to live in the Other Valley. Other than porn, you did. <laughs> yeah, I used to live in the Valley, <laughs> and my wife and I were watching it, and we're like, oh, we're like a little nostalgic, I'm like, oh, the Valley. Oh, that's right. We we used to live in the Valley. Sherman Oaks. We lived there. Oh, what? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. 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 Those yep. of you, those of you that are just watching this, the Valley is a part of Los Angeles. It's still San, in Los San Fernando Valley. Right. It's Northern LA. Basically there's the, there's the LA basin and Northern LA is like in a Valley. And that's where places that you may and have heard of like studio city, Sherman Oaks, Encino. And it's like totally like the Burbank. home of like the Valley girl. Like, the Valley girls, Burbank. The Valley girl. The Valley girl. <laughs> a lot of that Burbank technically is its own uh its own city, city but but so. still in the valley though mm -hmm. Very much so, so that's also famously uh woodland hills which reach 122 degrees the other day Eesh. uh but anyway so that was fun for us did you uh have you ever lived in the valley vera vanguard no, no. I, i'm not I, I live in hollywood like proper <laughs> But I've spent a lot of time in the valley, also for porn. Anyway, uh, what's up? <laughs> so, okay, you spent a lot of time in the valley. Huh? Moving on. So, uh, here's the thing. Let's talk about this a little bit more, bit by bit. There's also a kid in there uh, named Miguel. Mm -hmm. Cool, looks fine. I think that it was a great opening, um, even before that, where we mm -hmm. wake up and we get to, or he wakes up. But first, we get to see, kind of like a last time on the Flashback, Karate Kid, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it goes over the whole thing in like in this condensed version. And then we also even better was when Johnny was driving and he was reliving his high school years. Poor guy, you know, he's like, ah, oh, I had this girl and everything's great, and he's like smiling and drunk. And then he remembers Daniel son coming. He's like, mm, grumpy driving now. <laughs> I just love grumpy drunk driving. Yeah, I loved it. I love that nostalgia. I love <laughs> quick PSA, up. people. If you're gonna drive drunk, at least don't do it grumpy. Or don't just drive don't. drunk, also. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, we'll play the eighties. Play that eighties soundtrack. Yeah, if you want, if you feel like you're drunk and you want to go drive grumpy, just turn, sit in your car, turn on the eighties music, and rock out. Yeah, yes. but make sure that your garage door is open when you're doing it. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or no, keep it closed. No, open. <laughs> Michael, do you think they should have it open or closed if they're just running their engine in their garage? Well, if you're, if you're just listening to the radio and, and the engine isn't running, then you can have the door closed. Mm -hmm. Especially, probably your neighbors would, would appreciate that, so they're not hearing all your your music blasting out of your car stereo. But if you feel like you want to rev the engine and you want to turn the car on, definitely open that garage door, people. Yeah, but and you're a pro. PSA. Mike's a pro at pretending like the engine's on with his, he goes like, <laughs> and don't forget the. <laughs> unless, unless you're in a Tesla, then you're okay. True. <laughs> Very true. So we get a we get our glimpse that not only is this guy a loser, it was cute that he wakes up, he takes a sip of his coors, it's and he immediately just, he's like, ugh. And then he like gross, goes and goes, oh, and drinks some more. Gross, warm, flat coors. And then later on you see him pouring whiskey into his coors. Yeah. And drinking is that. Is that a flavor? I don't know. I'm straight edge, so I, I've never had a drink. Whiskey so. flavored coors, yeah. Probably. Is that bad? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad, yeah. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, I, I've drink it. I've probably drank worse, but uh. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that he? Uh, it looked like it was a bottle of Jack Daniels. Do you think he hates it? Hates himself for drinking it because it has Daniel's name on it. <laughs> oh shit! Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Burn and, on every and isn't, level. Isn't Johnny? <laughs> isn't another derivative of the name John Jack? So maybe yeah. that's like a combination of the two names jack and daniels i don't that's know eight. i don't know that anybody has ever thought about that more than you did right now I, it just happened it it cost the thought accosted me actually thought accosting thought accosting 
<laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so we also see what I was trying to get to before I started rambling was that we also see that not only is he a loser, but he's also a bigot because he sees yeah. the kid. He goes, he goes, great, more immigrants. More immigrants. He's like, <laughs> I'm from Riverside. <laughs> it's like they're nice. trying to make them hate, you, like the audience hate him, but we're just like so on his side from like the first second we see him. We're like, yep, love him. You can't do oh. any wrong in my eyes. I don't, know always, I, I don't always, know that I love him, but... <laughs> well, we're always rooting for the person to turn their life around, to be, right. less, exactly. to be less exactly. of a bigot, to be less negative. I mean, that's the, the style of the 80s, too. The, the yeah. lovable loser of the guy that says the worst things and you're like, turn your life around, start yeah. loving things, dude. It's that yeah. easy. Yeah. But then he goes to, to, to get his car back from Daniel's, uh, from, from Daniel's body shop, and then... Daniel starts kind of talking shit to him. Like, yeah, he totally <laughs> did. Like I the, love that. Like it, if you look behind Ryan's, behind Ryan's head, there's like, there's Ralph Macho and he calls over his associates. He's like, hey, this is my buddy Johnny. And then there's like, hey, you're the karate guy. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. yeah. Aren't you the guy I that, is this the guy that you, you kicked his butt? He's like, well, technically I kicked him in the face, but yeah. <laughs> and then they started like duking out. He's like, well, you stole my girlfriend. He's like, well, it wasn't your girlfriend. And then he's like, yeah. well, the legal one. And they're really hammering it out, man. I really needling him. They're both, in other words, the point is they're both still living in the past. Right. Because yeah. they really are. I mean, look at the karate kid is just talking about, you know, we'll karate kick the, and everybody gets a free right. bonsai tree. And like, who, let me ask you this. Who is going to remember that he won this under 18 karate championship back in the 80s? Well, yeah, we all saw the movie. No, I'm I mean, saying I would remember that if I did that. No, if you did that, but I'm saying and who else oh, I in see. the Valley is going to remember? Oh, every, hey, isn't that that kid that won that karate championship in the 80s? Yeah, no, oh, in God. high school. And it wasn't even televised, so like, right. how many people, just the audience that was there knew about it, and that's right. it. Hey, you got, oh man, this kid beat this other kid up by kicking him in the face, illegally, but you know, uh, but yeah, buy man. a car from him, yeah. Well, maybe the, the newscasters are still talking about it. They're like, it's the 35th anniversary of that high school <laughs> championship in 1984, where... Daniel son, whatever he was, LaRusso. <laughs> LaRusso, AKA, we call him the karate kid. And then they, and they're like, today we're going to go in depth on whether that kick was cool or not cool. And they just really duke it out, you know, in the does, local. Does anyone want to comment on the fact that Ralph Macchio hasn't aged a day? What is he, a vampire? Like, who, what is that? Like, wow. Um, he looks like he's aged to me, but from- Yeah, from I've the, noticed a few days. From the, from the little- from the baby that he was in the 80s. I mean, they showed the, those clips from him of the 80s. He was a baby. Yeah, he really he was. He was a little baby. A little baby. And now here he is, karate chopping the prices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The free bonsai tree was kind of landed on pretty thick. Every customer, yeah. but even customers that don't buy anything, maybe, because they just hand them out. Um, where does he get like wholesale bonsai trees? He's the karate kid. He's probably got a hookup oh. in Okinawa. Of course. Right. <laughs> Those things are no joke. Like you have to take care of them. They're not like a succulent where you just leave it and it's fine. <laughs> you gotta take care of those things. Now we can't go through this whole podcast without mentioning a scene that I thought was noteworthy. It was when the lady says you took a shit in my powder room. He says, you told me to go there. And ah! she says, yeah, I didn't know you were going to take a shit. <laughs> right. And so I was very pleased with that interaction. Anybody else? Huh? Absolutely. Right. Okay. What about, the, what about when he goes to the, to, the lick, to the liquor store to buy a pizza and the guy just Ew. handles it with his Band-Aid finger? Uh, Who does that? And then he eats it anyway. He eats it anyway, like on the curb. He said you have a tiny wang. Tell him he's got a tiny wang. I speak, I speak English. English. Not only that, he gets accosted by the freaking homeless lady while he's eating this pizza. Because he looks more homeless than she does. <laughs> also, I will say that 
I, I didn't check who directed this, but I felt like the entire delivery of some of the scenes were extremely 80s. Like the bully kids, when the bully kids were making fun of Miguel, Miguel. and then also talking jive over to Johnny, they did it in very 1985 style, which is just yes. like, hey, you're, uh, we're gonna get, oh, you're ugly. And like when the guy says, like uh, the best line was when he says, he's the jerk off the cling my dad's septic tank. That explained why he smells like shit. <laughs> I explained that like three times. I'm like, I that, felt that like I- the director. I, I wonder if we looked it up, like are the writers similar? Like did they get the, the original writers or, or like 80s movie writers? Like, huh? Let's see. Definite, it, it, it definitely had that 80s wow. delivery. Yeah, it looks like uh, at least one guy, Robert Mark Kamen. Uh, worked on the karate was a writer on the karate kid and wrote so he this came as well. in on it oh no uh, no so no so this is uh it says based on the characters created by so that's all that was um created for television by is this other guy this other guy who wrote hot tub time machine he's the writer he's the writer of this cobra kai episode Okay, so they did bring in some big guns. They did. Good for them. It just, it just definitely felt like not only in the writing were they trying to capture that 80s nostalgia, but also in the acting and the direct, like the, the delivery was very 80s. Even Ed Asner played, like, seemed like an uh, old crotchety yeah, 80s yeah. character. Like this guy Hayden Schlossenberg, who wrote uh, the Harold and Kumar movie, movies. Mm. Um, he was. Uh, okay, so so there's some decent talent writing this. Like, yeah, hell yeah, Harold and Kumar was awesome. I love he that was movie. also the, one of the co-directors, and then the other co-director was the other guy who helped create this, which is John Hurwitz, who also wrote uh, helped with the uh, Harold and Kumar, and also looks like Amer American Reunion. So. Some of the American Pies. Oh, yeah. Harold and Kumars. They brought in some good people. That's why it's good. Can you really cash a check that's been ripped in half? I guess so, right? Yeah, if you tape it, it right? It, it doesn't say void on it, so, yeah. you know, things yeah. happen. So, so yeah. let that be a lesson to all of you. If you're going to give somebody a check, just because they rip it up doesn't mean they can't cash it. <laughs> and if you change your mind and say, I never mind, rip, throw on the ground, they can just tape it back up and whoop yep. the daisy. And then they can Look buy themselves that. a karate dojo. And, sound and sound spray, economic advice. Spray paint a stencil on the wall. Hell I, really, yeah. I, I like that very end, though, just where, where there's that little montage of him buying it. There it is of him uh, <laughs> he was hiding behind you of uh you know where he, he he rents out that space next to the falafel place and i i had to play that a couple times too just to really soak it up and enjoy it um and the stencils as you say strike first strike hard no mercy no mercy mm. so what do you guys think do you think an enemy deserves mercy no yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, so we've got dif differing opinions here. Well, the only power that can make my enemy my friend is love. <laughs> That's the quote. And it's all true. <laughs> well, and if you don't want them to be your friend, then yeah, they don't, then whatever, you do whatever you want. Yeah. If you're, but if you're trying to turn them around, then you got to be merciful. What do you think, Michael? I agree. Ooh, two to one. Now, Vera, you got to defend. Why don't you want to show your enemies mercy? Because I live the lifestyle of Conan, you know, show, you know, <laughs> bring your enemies to your knees. Oh, Conan O'Brien said that? Hear, yeah. Hear the wailing of their women. <laughs> this way. is the, the perfect opportunity, Michael, to do your impression of Regis Philbin talking to Conan because he calls him Conan. All right. Oh, my, my, I have to do that? I thought you were doing it. No, you have to. Conan! I don't know. 
I don't, I, I don't do if you're, I don't do a Regis Philbin, so I don't know why oh. you just came up with that. I don't know. I felt like you did anyway. Yeah, it's that was the whole great. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, hear the lamentations of their women. Hey, WTF, Regis and Kathy Lee? Oh, how dare you! <laughs> no, how about well the the new thing is WTF Kelly and Ryan. Ah, because they just keep moving, you know. Then it was Regis and Kelly. Then it's Kelly and whatever. Oh, Ryan. Oh, and maybe it's Ryan Seacrest. Is it Ryan? I just remember seeing the Kelly. I don't and Ryan. even know. Wasn't it Ryan? It's wasn't it Kelly and friends? Wasn't it Kelly and like Shannon Sharp for a little while or somebody like that? Like oh, I feel like it was fun. like some ex NFL guy or something. Yeah. Stay on topic. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Thanks for reminding us though. <laughs> So <laughs> WTF, whatever that show is. Um, what do you think about the humor, guys? All around, what do you think about the humor? It, like I said, it was subtle. It was a little mean. It was subtle, but I liked it. I mean, just uh, the, the awkwardness of when Johnny walks in to the LaRusso Auto to pick up his car it's just <laughs> it was just so awkward and then the, 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 he he walks up to the lady and he's like oh yeah i want to get my car and she's like why we've got the best and like, she's trying to sell him on like and she has no idea of, of the backstory or anything like that. and of course that happens to be the one where daniel is out of his right. four or five locations right. and he happens to be there but we knew that was coming what do you think of the uh, humor vera vanguard it's uh, it's basically a collision of fate. That's what it is. Everyone's fates are coming together in this first episode to make them all relive that nostalgia and like, oh, it, it's sort of like you you haven't seen someone in a really long time and you're like you can all identify with this whole thing. Like you see them and you're either like if they were not nice to you the last time you saw them thirty years ago, you're like loser, so happy. Or, or it's like they're now they're like higher up the food chain than you are, and you're like, ah, god damn that. So this is <laughs> this is the come this is the the culmination of fates intertwining. So I can't wait to see the rest of this. Thing. You know, that's a good point that you bring up fate because, like in '80s movies, they they write these things as if there are ten people total on the planet because they keep running into the same person. Uh, uh, Johnny runs into Miguel at the dumpster. And then two hours later, he runs into him at the mini mart and he just happened to, whoa, what a, what a coincidence. And then he goes into the auto shop and, oh, what a coincidence. There's Daniel's son. He just happens to be there. Or, and then before that, oh, what a coincidence. The, the uh, tow truck driver just happens to be taking it to uh, LaRusso's La auto, yeah. auto place. And then, oh, Daniel's son's daughter just happens to be in the car that hit the, i'm like it it's like there's seven people in all of los angeles and they can't help but bumping into each other because there's only seven of them but the fact is there's like what five million people in the city what are the chances that they would keep running into each other the fact that the valley is huge like people think the valley is small it's a very large amount of land that's spread over a very large area mm -hmm. so yeah it's yeah but they're just in reseda number one yeah. It's not, uh, like yeah. it's not like they're driving out to Burbank or Woodland Hills or like going into Hollywood or, or, or driving over to... Which, which begs the question, why haven't they all bumped into each other before? If they're all living like near blocks from each other. But then also time. what I'll say is that there'd be no story. So. Right. Which is, yeah. Ryan would <laughs> rather there's no story <laughs> not be logical well i'm like there, that's a lot of coincidences in 26 minutes but when it's written in 80 style where everything is kind of cheesy and everything is kind of leave your brain at the door it's like you don't really care i don't right. care it's fine it doesn't bother me the when it does well, bother me right. did you expect intellectual stimulation like <laughs> <laughs> when it, it does bother me is when everything is trying to be realistic and serious and they're trying to be like this really could happen and these coincidences happen you go come on give me a break but in a show like this whatever it's it's for fun it's a show that's made for fun yes whatever tf whatever tf <laughs>
Yeah, so uh, what I'm trying to say is, Vera, let's talk about you for a moment, shall we? Okay. So first things first, you said that you just did a bodybuilding competition. You just finished I one. Did. I okay. did. I, I won first and third place last weekend. Wow. I do, I do bodybuilding for like fun. It's a hobby. It's a hobby. Like music. But, what, kind, yeah. what kind of diet do you have to help out with your bodybuilding? <laughs> uh, I, I don't talk about my diet. Uh, like I don't talk about Fight Club, but I will say this, that you, you either have health or you have aesthetics. Pick one. You can't have both. It's both are extremes. You won't get the aesthetics if you're going for health and you won't get the, the health if you're going for the aesthetics. I prefer the aesthetics. Everybody always thinks that I Photoshop my abs. I'm like, no, nah. <laughs> it's real. Wow. They're that's there. interesting. So, so you're saying basically if you want to look your best, you can't necessarily just focus yeah, on just health. You just have to yeah. eat like McDonald's and like Carl's Jr. and Jack and the, yeah, those kinds of foods, right? The unhealthy foods. All day long. And you'll get abs like these. No time. Promise. Yeah, I think I tried that. And I got, the, I think, the opposite of those kinds of abs. You got one big ab. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a six pack in your fridge, right? <laughs> I've got a keg down here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's pretty yeah. awesome, Vera. That Thank is really you. cool. Nice, nice ripped abs. Yes. If you uh, want ripped abs, you, you, you're going to be doing a few things. It's like, it's like, but you call it different things. Some people call it starvation. We call it intermittent fasting. Some people call it like, hey, you're, you're like foggy in the brain because you haven't eaten a carb in three months. And we call it keto. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, speaking of keto, I see Kitty outside. Hi, Kitty. Oh, you have a kitty. I should call her Keto instead of Kitty. Um, That's right, Keto. But you're also an actress, are you not? You've got a couple projects I, in the works, or what's going on there? I I, I am a writer, producer, and uh, acting just happens on the side, but um, I am the world's top hand model. I double kids' hands in, like, over 500 commercials and right now I'm working on a TV show called Playtime 101 and I am the starring hand it's like robot chicken but we are puppeteering the actual toys versus claymation mm. so and it's with like dysfunctional superheroes wait the puppets are dysfunctional superheroes Yes, yeah. They're, they're, they're action figures that yeah. I'm like the little kid hand that, that puppeteers one, and then we have another. They probably do um, like this kind of thing. Hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing all right. How are you doing? All right, cool. That's, that's exactly it, but on another level. <laughs> <laughs> what, where can on we another level? This? So more like this then? Hi, how are you? Yes. All right, cool, 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 cool. Yes, just like that. Can we find it online? Next where level. is this? Uh, it, it, I don't know where it's going to be. We just started shooting this week, so it's just brand new, brand wow. new. And I will let you know, of course, when it airs, where it's going to go. We're doing 10 episodes, season one, so that's going to be my September. Wow, that's really cool. So you. you said you do hand model jobs. I had to put that middle word in there. <laughs> do, Thank you. I was going to say, yeah, that's, so you do hand model jobs for yeah. for work and for, uh, for a lot of oh. Yeah, mostly commercials. Like all my hands have been like in every toy commercial you could imagine. Uh, those are my hands, like Barbie, Hot Wheels, uh, mo all the movies, like all the Superman, like DC, Marvel, Transformers, and anything, like any toy. I do a lot of um, Paw Patrol, like, yeah, it's, it's insane. Like you've seen my hands over and over again you just didn't know it's them well so this begs the question because i know everybody watching is going to want to see this can you give us a demonstration of your hands holding a toy or like some of the things that they ask you to do yeah <laughs> let me get a I, I don't have many toys here that i want to play with <laughs> but i'm not touching that excuse me but go. I have this. This is 
This is Mr. Judgmental Unicorn. I, I don't know if he's he's glowing. Like yeah. he's just glowing. It would be it would be sort of like um like I would hope would tear them alive, like, oh I'm so cute. Like look at me, like oh. But of course if you wouldn't see my face, I'd be out of the shot doing it like here. Like <laughs> Like no one, no one knows like what we do, but we, it's never like this. It's always mm. like I'm below the stage puppeteering over my hand, watching a monitor below. So oh. it's like the most bizarre set of skills you can imagine. What about if you're just like showing toys as like a kit, like Hot Wheels, you know, do you do something different with your hands or do they just say, hold yeah. it? I, I am always in some weird funky position. Like for Hot Wheels, if I'm driving a Hot Wheel, I'm like I'm like driving it like this, or I'm I'm shooting it over, or I'm or I'm activating a certain <clears throat> playset in a very specific way to like shoot the car, and I have to time it because usually all of Hot Wheels have like some funky thing going on, like a dragon spinning on a pole, and I have to shoot that that car. Yeah perfectly timed with it spinning so it lands on a dragon's back and then the dragon collapses like it's like the most bizarre thing ever mm. there's like only eight of us that have this set of skills and we are in vicious competition with each other for the <laughs> do like, you hate all of them the back. <laughs> do you hate all of them like or are there like one or two they're like you're okay you're okay we're all friends we're all associates frenemies we're, we're all colleagues. But they're jealous of you though, right? Because you're the one that's got the most jobs, you said, right? Because you're the most famous. Uh, uh, we, won't tell, we won't tell them. They're not going to watch this anyway. So. That, that's like Little Hand Fight Club. So, you know, we don't talk about Little Hand Fight Club. But uh, yeah, the other stuff is the music. I've been, I've been doing a whole lot of music. Like, learn the drums, just got a bass. That's my baby. That, that actually is as old. This is a vintage Ibanez. It's as old as the Karate Kid movie. Wow. Been, uh, now they make them in, in different countries in Asia. This is an original from Japan. So. You know, I was actually going to ask you, do you feel like your dex manual dexterity that you've gotten from playing the guitar has helped you with your... Absolutely. Guitar? I am 100% ambidextrous. So, like, I can job it on, on both hands. <laughs> You hear to hear first on Watch the First podcast. So that's good to hear this. <laughs> that's pretty awesome, though. That's really good stuff. It's a good gig. Um, probably like, pays pretty well. Huh? Probably pays all right. Pays for all my toys. She's making money hand over fist. Oh. I gotta hand it to you. No, I bet you've heard every joke. Let's not even. I, I love every joke. I, it's, it's, it's daily. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, well, it's not a professional hand model. Not many. True. Well, um, that's awesome. Really cool, and thank you so much for joining us. We are going to include all of your important and pertinent information in the description box below, so everybody Please check out here. Please follow Vera's. me on the Insta. Check out her Instagram, check out her hands and her upcoming projects and past projects. I'll have all and that also I play, I play things on my Instagram so you can hear me like rocking on guitar and stuff. I look like there, I like that there's like an extension of your hair like right above you, it looks like in the background. <laughs> oh, it's, it's my wings. Oh, it's nice. my wings. Oh, wings and those are all my bodybuilding trophies up there. Hey. Wow, good job. Oh, and did you see the, the bat lift? <laughs> no, I didn't. The Lucite bat lift right there. Wow, nice. Very cool. <laughs> I broke my nose with that thing. <laughs> you had to be careful. <laughs> I know, I was just swinging around and went. <clears throat> you aim it at oh, your wow. opponents. <laughs> right? That's how no you win. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to strike your opponents first and hard with those with, and give them no mercy. I, I didn't go to Cobra Kai. I didn't know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Speaking See of which, that yes. 
let's uh, let's put a button on Cobra Kai now. Um, so the way we end this thing is we go to something that I like to call the terrible twos. I like to call it that because Mike forced me to. <laughs> Um, he likes oh, to call it that because it's dumb and he loves dumb things. Also, one yeah. final thing about just off the off topic is I like seeing when uh, Johnny was parked at Mulholland Drive looking down at the whole valley. So when right. you guys see beautiful. him, when you see him like pulled over and looking down at the valley below, now you know that's what it is. It's Mulholland Drive. Obviously, he didn't say it, but we know that's got to be Mulholland Drive. I just want to know what he's doing up there to get the fire, uh, your fire phone call, like... That's the most beautiful place in the world to get bad news, I guess. <laughs> Maybe you're right. So what we do here is we close out with the terrible twos, which is the two toughest questions of the day. And the first one goes a little, a little something like this. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, scale of one to 10, what would you give the first episode of Cobra Kai? On a scale of one to 10, I would give Cobra Kai a strong seven, a strong seven. Not just a regular seven, a very <laughs> strong seven. Mm, okay. I felt like it was good, it was nostalgic. Uh, they definitely treated the subject matter right. It could have been, it could have gone a lot worse. Uh, and they, they definitely pleasantly surprised me. I like the subtle humor. Um, yeah, I give it a strong seven. Okay. Vera, what about you? Scale of one to 10, what would you give this first episode? I give it a rocking eight and a half. <laughs> I, I am very excited to see the rest of the show now. I almost did, but I just ran out of time. You just answered the second question already. Oh, oh snap. I didn't, I didn't even hear half. it. So I <laughs> pretended like I didn't even know, but eight and a half. Okay. You know, half. coincidentally, I'm vacillating between eight and a half and nine as well. Wow. I think, I think, I think I have to stick with an 8.5 because the only, it, it just wasn't, it, it would have had to make me a little bit more curious as to what's going to happen in episode two for me to push it to a nine. I originally thought nine, but then I was like, I was like, you know, I, I'm not like dying to find out what happened because you know what's going to happen next. Theoretically, he's going to teach the kid and then things will happen and whatever. And then he's going to talk to Daniel's son about his daughter or something, or maybe he won't. But anyway, um, eight and a half, a very, very karate kick, powerful 8.5 bordering mm. on a nine. Mm. Um, very good. It's very, it was a, it is a very solid pilot. This is something where if somebody reads this pilot, uh, they're going to want to see everything. And if they just watch the pilot, they're going to want to buy the show. It's good. It's very good, I think. Um, now, for the purposes of this podcast, we had to watch the first episode. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, now that you no longer have the pressure of needing to watch this episode, the podcast is over of your own volition, would you watch the second? I would not. I enjoyed the first, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm not really that interested in seeing more. I don't really care. Like you said, like we kind of know what's going to happen. It's kind of a little, it's, it's going to be predictable. It, it might not be, but then I, I just don't really care enough. Mm -hmm. What about Vera? Would you, do you, or not would you, I'm do gonna you take care it all the way. I'm going to, I'm going to watch this show. I'm going to, Take it all the way to the end. That sounds like um, an 80s song. Yeah, take, take it, it to all the, the way to the it, end. I was going to say, take it to the limit. Take well, that's, it to that's the my limit. Answer. I'm, I'm answering in the spirit of the 80s. Nice. <laughs> if you um, want, I can play the spirit of the 80s on guitar for you, and then I'll, I'll play you a riff or something, some Metallica. <laughs> oh, I thought there was an actual song called Spirit of the 80s. I was like, I, I was going to say, yeah. One. Let's Sounds write rocking. the song, the three of us together. Spirit of the eighties. Spirit of the eighties. And we'll do it like uh, that that song. Um, we didn't start the fire, but and just name every TV show of the eighties and all the movies. Karate Kid, Cobra Kai. That was nineteen eighty eight, I think. We didn't start the fire. Maybe eighty nine. 
he can. But we'll 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 write a song and we'll just name every like, like just like that. We didn't start the fire song. Just like everything name it all. Yes. But I'll tell you, I'm dying to know if Ryan would watch the second. Yeah, Ryan. Would Don't you? die, man. Because uh, I'm gonna tell you. Well, that then you're gonna save my life. Yeah. <laughs> What a That's hero. So, um, boy, uh, I'm going to give this a solid yes. I would watch the second episode. Have not, you watched the second? Nope. Okay. Not because I'm dying to watch it or not because I'm like, I got to know what happens, but because it was fun, it gave me a good feeling. And the bottom line is I enjoyed it. And even if uh, the writing doesn't shock me, even if the writing doesn't have me begging for what's going to happen next, all that is kind of second to the fact that it just made me happy watching it. It was an enjoyable watch. And I think that nowadays that aspect of TV viewing is kind of sorely lacking. Like people oh, yeah. forget that sometimes people just want to watch something because it makes you happy. It's enjoyable. Right. And that's why so many people go back and watch like old Full House reruns or Friends reruns or even why they revamped Full House again. It's because sometimes they just kind of want to leave your brain at the door and, you know, turn off the news for God's sakes and just watch something that you could just be dumb and laugh about. Yeah, and, whatever happened to entertainment, you yeah. know? Well, we've got it here and I would watch, yeah. I would watch the second episode, yes. WTF Fuller House. Oh, don't do that to us. <laughs> But if Do you want us to Ryan, if you want us to watch the first episode of Fuller House or Full House, just put it in the comments below. So please remember in the comments below, WTF, whatever you want us to see, and we will do it. Also, as Michael likes to say, elbow drop, karate kick that subscribe button, smash that bell icon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but be sure you do that and definitely comment below what you thought of Cobra Kai. Tell us what you think we should watch next and we will uh, see you next time, right guys? And most importantly, leave us a like. Give us, click that thumbs up button and if you didn't like us, then don't click any buttons. Right. No, just click subscribe anyway. Yeah, yeah. That'll, yeah obviously. That'll that. teach us a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aww. Vera, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a blast. I hope you had me. fun too. Yeah, thanks oh, for being here. Awesome. And for those of you at home, as Michael likes to say, this podcast was... Oh yeah, that's right. That's what Michael likes to say. Um, this podcast was a karate kick flavored fruit punch. That was terrible. I just really yeah. want to just... I just really want you to say your thing, but okay, we'll do okay. it. So this, that's what this podcast was. Go ahead, Mike. This podcast was a spear <laughs> punch to the throat. Ooh. This podcast was an illegal kick to the face. Uh, <laughs> ah, <laughs> nice. And now I'll say it. Don't forget everyone to watch the first of things. Beautiful. See you next time guys.